lost sneering. Hold on. Is the hat too much? Probably not, but we're, we're already doing a lot with the makeup and the earrings, so we'll just, we'll save that for a photo. Hello folks, welcome back to my channel. You can call me Lolly. I didn't really plan today's makeup. I just decided I was gonna wear these earrings and I wanted to wear this particular like duochrome green eyeshadow and then the moody fall toned purple just came out to play. So <laughs> I don't always look this dramatic, but when I do, we, we just, we have a good time. Okay, today's video is my bi-monthly book haul. I'm going to be talking about all the books that I acquired in the months of July and August. So let's get my master list going. Um, first off was an audiobook. I redeemed my, I redeemed a credit from Libro FM. I picked up the audiobook for Under the Black Flag. I, uh, this was a book from my Amnesia Reads TBR that I read last month in August. I talk about it in my August wrap up. I DNF'd it at 80%. I was, I was very done with it. Um, I don't regret like buying, acquiring an audiobook copy for a book that I'm going to be unhauling. I think without the audiobook, if I had tried to read it, it would have taken me forever to read a good enough chunk of it physically in order to make that assessment. If you want to know what irked me so bad, go watch my August wrap up. I, I'll try to remember to link it in the description box below. So moving on. Next, I, uh, I did a little project on my own of listing all of the, all, did I list? I either listed every author I've read this year or like every new author I've read this year. I think it was every author I've read this year. Um, and kind of breaking them down into major dem like um, ethnicity demographics, um, if they were queer, if they were disabled, if they were from an other um, underrepresented uh, community. Um, and I realized that at the time I made that list, I had not read from any indigenous authors at, I think this was like a middle of July that I made that list. Um, I immediately remedied it by uh, borrowing The Fake Keeper from my library. And then I also bought some books from Pango. These were two separate purchases. But in those purchases, I acquired two books by Sherry Dimaline. By Sherry Dimaline? Sherry Dimaline? I'm listening to an audiobook of one of these. I should know how her name's pronounced. Hold on. Written by Sherry Dimaline. Narrated. Sherry Dimaline. Neither of my guesses was correct. Anyway, two books by Cherie Dimaline. Um, we have uh, The Marrow Thieves, which I am currently, what, like a third of the way through, and then Empire of Wild. I think this was a, a new release of this year? Oh no, 2019. New to me, anyway. Um, these are both fantasy, are they young adult? You think I would know like what audience book I am currently reading, but but I've been wrong before. So okay, so The Marrow Thieves is young adult and I believe Empire of Wild is also young adult. Um they're both fantasy. Um The Marrow Thieves is they're both kind of like fantasy and horror or horror adjacent. Um Let's see, The Empire of Wild, I know, kind of deals with the um, figure of the Rougarou, which is kind of the, the uh, North American indigenous story of a werewolf, like their, their version of it, the Rougarou. Um, and then The Marrow Thieves, the context is as follows a troop of um, young uh, Canadian indigenous post-apocalyptic survivors in a world where everyone else has uh, lost their ability to dream and the only people who can still dream are the indigenous people and they are actually being hunted for, I'm gonna guess, for their bone marrow. Um, I've, I've gotten to a point where like someone has been taken and they've been taken back to these schools that they are like, yeah, they're not new. They were um, 
absolutely formatted based on the residential schools. Um, so this one is, is fascinating and I'm getting a little bit of like a young adult version of like a post-apocalyptic world, kind of like the fifth season. Um, possibly also Octavia Butler, but it's been so long since I've read anything of hers that I, I take that with a grain of salt. Um, anyway, interesting and perfect for spooky season. Um, and then also in that Pango purchase, I also picked up The Ballad of Black Tom, which I also have read. Um, so look for my thoughts of this in um, a future wrap up, but this is a novella from Tor.com. Um, this is written by Victor Laval, um, and this is turn of the century, 19, early 1900s story of this, uh, of Charles Tommy Tester and um, the paranormal journey that turns him into the specter of Black Tom. Um, interesting. Yes. And then a book I haven't read yet. Uh, this is The Dark Fantastic Race and the Imagination from Harry Potter to the Hunger Games by Ebony Elizabeth Thomas. This is a nonfiction. Um, and um, yeah, it just, I mean, first off, this, this cover, can we just appreciate the cover? Uh, the Dark Fantastic is a wake-up call to all who research, teach, or create young adult speculative fiction. Thomas issues a call to decolonize a speculative fi fiction genre and to ensure more text, films, tele and television shows that include a black female protagonist become the norm to influence a new generation of readers and writers. So, sounds interesting, sounds thought-provoking. I'm here for it. And then, um, I... Uh, my dad gave me this copy of The Three-Body Problem by Shushin Liu, translated by Ken Liu. Um, he's like, hey, would you have any interest in reading this? I'm like, oh my god, yes, that has been, like, at the top of my to find a copy, a secondhand copy of this book for a while. But I wanted to read something from um, Shushin Liu. I'm not sure I'm saying that quite right. Um, I will have, I always have the titles, the authors, and translators, narrators, illustrators of the books I'm talking about in my description box below if you would like to reference how they're spelled or try to remember remember which video did I talk about which book. That will all be in the description box below. Um, so this is, is like a very well-known um, popular uh, Chinese science fiction um, and I also have a goal to read more translated fiction throughout the year. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of struggling with that. That's a different conversation. <laughs> um, but yes, my dad was like, do you want this? I'm like, absolutely. And also it's a lot thicker than I thought it would be. But I'm excited. And then from NetGalley, I received an audio arc of A Half Built Garden. Um, I have listened to this. I loved it. I reviewed it in... Maybe my July wrap up? Well, yeah, because it wasn't last month and I acquired it in July. So in my July wrap up, I talk about this. This is a um, kind of slow, uh, cerebral, thought provoking science fiction that has um, an imagined first contact with aliens. And um, it's been like compared to the works of, Earth, of Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, in terms of something I've read somewhat recently, I would also compare it to um, the fiction works of Carl Sagan. Um, it's not very action-packed. It's very, like, I think, like, a, a side of science fiction that, like, I struggle to, to get into, but I do really enjoy it when I make it, where it's, like, it's not about the action and the aliens and, like, the technology. It's more real... It's more about exploring a what-if scenario like what if this thing happened how would humans react how would human society react how would humans and our society change in the face of this scenario um and yes loved it great and then the last book is another um e-arc from netgalley this is bindlepunk bruja um and the cover is lovely and let me real quick look up the synopsis 
A part-time reporter and club owner takes on crooked city councilmen, mysterious and deadly mobsters, and society's deeply rooted sexism and racism, all while keeping her true identity and magical abilities hidden, inspired by ancient Mexican folklore. The premise seemed interesting, and then I was like, all right, I'll just request it, see what happens. I got approved for it. We definitely will be getting to that one before the end of the year. Okay, so that's July. All right, August. Um, I was helping my mom do some clearing out of my old bedroom. I filmed a three-part decluttering during a heat wave little video mini-series, mini-series, three, three videos. I broke it up into three videos. Um, but in that, um, she's like, hey, do you want this book? Like, no one in this house is gonna, <laughs> gonna get around to reading it anytime soon. This is Blowout by Rachel Maddow. Corrupted Democracy, Rogue State Russia, and the Richest, Most Destructive Industry on Earth, which I believe talks about oil, given the uh, cover design. Um, I don't watch Rachel Maddow. I don't really watch any, like, news television personality people. Um, this was a book that we got for my grandmother, but, like, she, I think she found the writing style too challenging. She's in her 90s. Um, I don't know, there's people in their 90s who are still super sharp, but she, she, like, while she likes to watch Rachel Maddow, she found, like, the, the, the writing style a bit too dense for what her brain can handle at this time, um, so, you know, we took it back and we got her some different books for her birthday, so hopefully she will enjoy those more, um, but I'm just like, I don't know, I'll give it a, give it a shot, see see if I like what she has to say, see if I feel like, see if I find it thought-provoking. Oh, she's blurred by Naomi Klein, who I do like. With her savage wit, dazzling command of facts, and an eye for the absurd, Maddo tells the epic story of how American warfare came to be both never-ending and practically invisible. Ain't that the truth. All right, and then I, oh, I went to visit my in-laws in the town they live in, and they have great um, secondhand. They have both, like, uh, <clears throat> they have both a lovely small new bookstore and then a pretty sizable secondhand bookstore. So I, not every trip, but most trips I do try to make a point of stopping in there and doing some browsing. So on this trip, I picked up four books. Um, I picked up, hey, speaking of Naomi Klein, I picked up On Fire, The Burning Case for a Green New Deal. Um, I'm, I'm two for two with, with enjoying and appreciating Naomi Klein's um, investigative journalism books. So I'm like, all right, let's pick up this one. Um, I picked up um, two books by Madeline. Whoops. I picked up two books by Madeline Langle. We have The Arm of the Starfish, this uh, very interesting large hardcover, um, and then A Ring of Endless Light. Um, this is kind of like books I've... I've finished up reading um, Madeline Langle's Time Quintet, which starts with A Wrinkle in Time, and then this is part of um, some of her later adjacent series. And also I deliberately picked very different covers um, because with um, how old Madeline Langle's books are, there are like dozens of cover editions for her books. And I right now with the Time Quintet, each of the books is a cover style from a different edition. Um, and then each of these are a cover style that I don't already have. The one downside is this one is so much larger than all of my other books that it's not going to fit on the same shelf as the rest of them. So whenever I get around to reading it and have to put this into my red bookshelves, that's a problem for future me. But something I forgot to think about when I was actually picking out my editions. But anyway, um, I don't know when I'm gonna get around to reading them. I might want to wait until I collect all of the books in her next adjacent series before I start reading them. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, and then the last book I picked up, actually this one I picked up from um, the, the new bookstore. This is The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I've read one other book from her. I've read Mexican Gothic. Um, oh, on this month's TBR. I will be reading Certain Dark Things, which has to do with vampires, um, and then this one, which is such a lovely cover. I feel like we see a lot of it from far away, but let me give you a little, um, I don't know if it'll focus that close, but a little close-up of this woman in her 
fantastic outfit. Love that. But I think this is another kind of like gothic, gothic horror-esque story. A dreamy reimagining of the island of Dr. Moreau set against the backdrop of 19th century Mexico. I'm actually not that familiar with the island of Dr. Moreau. I wonder, I wonder if I should at least Google a synopsis before reading this. Or should I go in blind and see whether I am capable of, of I was about to say capable of ignoring the story. That is not the word I want to use. Mm -mm. Um, or should I go in blind and see if I'm capable of enjoying the story without that context? I think that's, I think that's an important barometer. If you're going to be writing something based on something else, like I don't think it's required, but I think it's an interesting perspective to be like, all right, if I don't know the reference, if I'm not really familiar with the source material, have you still written a compelling and complete story? We'll see. Let's hurry this up because I'm hungry. Okay. Uh, then I ha uh, got approved for another e-arc on NetGalley. This is The Ferryman by Justin Cronin. From New York Times bestselling author of The Passage comes a riveting standalone novel about a group of survivors on a hidden island utopia where the truth isn't what it seems. I'm already getting lost vibes. Like, I never finished the show, but like the early, like the first like three or four seasons when we're discovering the weirdness of the island, that's what I found interesting. The other soap opera side of that, we're not here to talk about Lost. What are you doing, honey? I just read through this description and I am... I have renewed interest in it. Okay, let me read this. Founded by the mysterious genius known as the designer, the archipelago of Prospero lies hidden from the horrors of a deteriorating outside world. In this island paradise, prosperous lucky citizens enjoy long fulfilling lives until the monitors embedded in their forearms meant to measure their physical health and psychological well-being fall below 10%. Then they retire themselves, embarking on a ferry ride to the island known as the nursery, where their failing bodies are renewed, their memories are wiped clean, and they are ready to restart life afresh. Proctor Bennett, of the Department of Social Contracts, has a satisfying career as a ferryman, gently shepherding people through the retirement process and, when necessary, enforcing it. But all is not well with Proctor. For one thing, he's been dreaming, which is supposed to be impossible in Prospera. For another, his monitor percentage has begun to drop alarmingly fast. And then comes the day he is summoned to retire his own father, who gives him a disturbing and cryptic message before being wrestled onto the ferry. Meanwhile, something is stirring. The support staff, ordinary men and women who provide the labor to keep Prospera running, have begun to question their place in the social order. Unrest is building, and there are rumors spreading of a resistance group known as Arrivalists who may be fermenting revolution. Soon Proctor finds himself questioning everything he once believed, entangled with a much bigger cause than he realized, and on, on a desperate mission to uncover the truth. So I feel like this is Lost meets the island? Is it... What, is it, it was a... What is... Who was it? It was like Scarlett Johansson and, and Ewan McGregor. It sounds like dystopian paranormal thriller. Maybe paranormal. Maybe just like dystopian sci-fi thriller. Anyway, I hope it's exciting. Great. Okay, and next, ah, oh, this was a, a fun, this was a fun little haul. Um, I was willing to, I, so, um, I have like a, I have both like a fun money monetary budget and then I've also given myself a guideline not a hard rule but a guideline of I'm trying to buy a maximum of eight unread books a month um part way through the year I adjusted it to like let's try and max it out at six unread books just given the pace that I've been reading my physical tbr down for the year um, but I was willing to break it for this one because I stopped into a um, independent little thrift store um, that is black woman owned in my area and somebody had donated um, a couple of um, like young adult books in Spanish. <laughs> which is super exciting and then I've all because this thrift store is so close to me I have been like donating quite a bit and I'm like I, I mean I shouldn't feel obligated to buy something um if I don't need it but also like I financially I am capable of supporting this store 
by buying something. You know, the store not just needs, you know, donations of good quality items, but also like for people to actually buy the items. So I, I, when I donate stuff, if I have time, I go and I browse. I don't usually find something, but this time I found some books that I was actually interested in um, and like a plant pot. Great. All right. So first off, two books, not in Spanish, but I found a copy of Keeper of the Lost Cities. This is a middle grade book that um, I've seen a couple of people I follow read and really enjoy. I know Beautifully Bookish Bethany, I think, has like read through the entire series. And I think Jessica Lady Love said reads also. I'm pretty sure she read it. I think she liked it. I'm pretty sure she did. <laughs> um, anyway, I've heard I've heard interesting good things about this. Um, so and this is oh my god, this is like this gift was provided by the Seattle Public Library Foundation. Um, but like the spot the spine is this is like brand new. Like the spine is completely intact. Lovely. Um, and then I also found this graphic novel called As the Crow Flies. Uh, and the premise, of, I've never heard, I've never seen this, I've never heard anything about this, but this premise, I, I feel like I'm a good audience for this premise to like, hold on, lost an earring, standby, wardrobe malfunction. Uh, Charlie Lamont is 13 years old, queer, black, and questioning what was once a firm belief in God. So naturally, she's spending a week of her summer vacation stuck at an all-white Christian youth backpacking camp. <laughs> oh boy. As the journey wears on and the rhetoric wears thin, she can't help but poke holes in the pious obliviousness of this storied sanctuary with little regard for people like herself or her fellow camper, Sydney. Um, so there's so much in there. <laughs> like, where do I even begin to be like, hold, I read this, I read this premise and I was like, absolutely, absolutely need, need to read this. Because we've got like questioning, I was, I was raised Catholic currently not practicing and like my family isn't either that's a long story um but like I was right like but like I have the context I have the context to like examine people who hold Christ uh Christian beliefs and then also like queer black and questioning in that circumstance um and then also like backpacking I mean I I'm not a backpacker I'm like a car camper not even. I grew up doing a lot of car camping and there's a lot of wonderful hiking and camping in the Pacific Northwest region. So again, like that's something where I'm like, I would, I would relate to that. Um, so yeah. Oh, it's won like a bunch of awards. Hold on. Slate Cartoonist Studio Prize 2013 nominee. Okay. It's been nominated. It hasn't, I don't think it's actually won. Okay. Autostraddle Comics and Sequential Art Award. It's nominee 2014, Will Eisner Comic Industry Award 2014, Ignatz Awards 2016 nominee. Anyway, let me know if you've if you've heard anything about this. The author is uh, Melanie Gilman. Um, let me know if you've heard anything about this or like if this sounds intriguing. Okay, and then the books I picked up in Spanish. This one was so exciting. Drama by Raina Telgemeier. Telgemeier? I should look up how to actually pronounce that. Um, but last month I read, where did I put Put it. Hold on. Oh, it's up there. I read Fantasmas, which is Ghosts, which is a graphic novel um, by Ryan Atalgemeyer that was translated into Spanish. I have a goal of trying to read at least four books in Spanish a year, and like my reading level is like upper middle grade, younger YA, and then of course like a graphic novel. Perfect. And I really, really enjoyed Fantasmas. So when I saw drama, and it looks like most of her series, her graphic novels like this have been translated by Scholastic in Espanol. Um, so yeah, this was, this was like a specific book in Spanish that I was keeping my eye out for. So, so excited to find this one. And then, then we have, um, La Forma Sombras by Daniel Jose Older. I think the English title is Shadow Shaper. Um, Daniel Jose Older is a, an author I don't see talked about a lot like on booktube or bookstagram currently I've come into the game pretty pretty late um but like I I go and I I read the descriptions for his books and I'm like this is an author I, I need to read something by this author this author sounds sounds very intriguing um and I don't see a lot of people talk about him but I, but like his books also seem to be well reviewed or like well 
yeah, well reviewed, like good star ratings and stuff. Um, this, I, I'm worried that this might be like a little bit advanced in the reading level. This might be more like upper YA. I'm willing to give it a try. Um, so La Forma Sombras translates to Shadow Shaper. Um, and this is a, um, urban fantasy. Let me just look up the synopsis. I'm struggling to translate that synopsis on the fly. Sierra Santiago was looking forward to a fun summer of making art, hanging out with her friends and skating around Brooklyn, but then a weird zombie guy crashes the first party of the season. Sierra's near comatose abuelo begins to say lo siento, I'm sorry, over and over. And when the graffiti murals and beds duly start to weep, well, something stranger than the usual New York mayhem is going on. Sierra soon discovers a supernatural order called the Shadow Shapers who connect with spirits via paintings, music, and stories. Her grandfather once shared the order's secrets with an anthropologist, Dr. Jonathan Wick, who turned the Caribbean magic to his own foul ends. Now Wick wants to become the ultimate Shadow Shaper by killing all the others one by one. With help from her friends and the hot graffiti artist Robbie, Sierra must dodge Wick's supernatural creations, harness her own shadow shaping abilities, and save her family's past, present, and future. Yeah, I'm on board. Let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know if you are also excited to read any of these in the near future. Um, I will have my social media and all the other places where you can find me in the description box below. I hope you have a good rest of your day. I encourage you to go out into the world and be curious. I will catch you folks in my next video. Bye!